Hey everyone, and welcome to this lesson on EAS workflows. If you're building and releasing a React Native application, you know that managing CI CD can get complicated. But with EAS workflows, you can automate the process from building your project to submitting it to the store all in one place. In this lesson, we'll cover what EAS workflows are and how they work, how to automate builds, tests, and submissions, how EAS workflows compare to other CI CD services like GitHub Actions and Circle CI. With EAS workflows, you don't have to set up everything from scratch. It comes with prepackaged job types that handle heavy lifting for you so you can focus on shipping your application, not configuring the CI CD. Plus, everything runs on EAS, making it super easy to manage your workflows in one place. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a solid understanding of how to set up and use EAS workflows to streamline development and release process. So let's dive in and get started. Already, guys, just a quick recap. Here we have the application that we've been working on. So in previous lessons, we have used EAS build, EAS hosting, updates, deployments, and environment variables, and many things. So EAS workflows, it's actually the second option that you can see here. And if I click on it right now, we don't see anything. Workflows is like the tool that is going to help us streamline all the process of building, submitting and testing and things like that. And on top of that, workflows can be extended to use custom logic, like writing custom scripts that trigger, for example, a Slack message or a Telegram message so that we can alert our team or if you want to do a specific business logic, you can do it by writing a workflow. Here, I also have the documentation of EAS workflows, as you can see here. Right now, we have this kind of information that is telling us that is in preview right now. But I know for a fact that EAS workflows, it's actually production ready and you can start using it today. Maybe by the time that you are watching this lesson, this information is gone. OK, so here I am on the GitHub repo of this project. It's called Expo Auth Example. Maybe I could change the name, of course, but it's just a simple example, right? So we need to have a repo so that we can connect this repo to EAS workflows. By the way, if you don't feel very confident using Git and GitHub, just check out one of the courses that we have here at callgivet.dev and it's going to get you up to speed super quickly. Let's go to workflows. And well, in this project, before I can start using workflows, the first thing that I need to do is just scroll down and click on GitHub under configuration. And then we're going to search for this um, expo auth example repo. So here I have it. Let's go ahead and connect it. If you are using a mono repo, it's a good idea to specify your project root in here. So for example, if you have a folder called apps and then inside the app, you have your app in here, you can you need to you know specify the base directory. So in this case, it's going to be the root. So that's correct. We don't need to update anything. And down here we have, you know, build triggers. We can create them here. We can also enable updates and even it's possible to build using GitHub labels. So for example, a GitHub label, you can add a, a label to a pull request. And once you add this label to that pull request, that is going to trigger a job that workflows is going to do, for example, building your application or creating an update for that specific branch and advanced things like that. So I think we are ready to start integrating our workflow. That was super easy. Now, I just want to quick mention the difference between EAS workflows and other CI CD services. So, for example, Circle CI and GitHub Actions. These services are more generalized and have the ability to do more than workflows, of course. However, those services also require you to understand more about the implementation of each job. While workflows, EAS workflows, comes with prepackaged jobs that we can actually use right out of the box so we don't have to worry about. Uh, the steps that involves building your app or submitting a build. EAS workflows gives us that for free so that we can actually focus on get things done in our application and ship faster. And on top of that, integrates perfectly with all the services that we are already using with Expo, EAS build, EAS submit, push notifications, etc. OK, so now that we know why we should use EAS workflows, let's see how we can set it up. So our project already has EAS configure, right? And if we go to my project and go to the ES.json. You can see that I have submit, build, build profiles, and a lot of cool stuff that we already set up in previous lessons. We already connected as well our project uh, using GitHub to EAS workflows. So now we can actually start writing a workflow. Let's go ahead and create this uh, very easy to understand Hello World script. I'm going to go back to my project and let's go ahead and in the root folder of my project, I'm going to create a new file. Then I'm going to create a folder called .eas slash workflows slash the name of my workflow, in this case, hello world.yaml. So you can use 
YML or YAML like this and hit enter. Now, pro tip guys is that you need to install a YAML extension so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot. So let's go ahead and install this YAML extension. This is going to provide syntax highlight and it's going to format your YAML so that, you know, it runs. Okay, so I'm gonna trust this guy and install this YAML extension and boom, that's it. Now let's go back to the example and copy this in here. For this very simple hello world example, we need to specify a name. So the name of this workflow is going to be hello world on push branches job hello world steps and you know this is kind of intuitive to understand i can just by looking at this i can see that um, i'm basically telling eas workflows that when someone pushes anything to any branch i want to run or trigger this job which is called hello world and then the steps that the, this job needs to take is going to be run the following echo hello world and that's it. Now, another thing that I actually know that the team is working on, it's a GitHub extension. So maybe by the time that you are watching this lesson, you can search for EAS workflows or just install the Expo extension, Expo tools, and you should be able to have syntax highlight in here and more explanations. So if we go back to the docs, you can see that name defines the name of the workflow on defines when the workflow should be triggered, like we you know said. And then jobs, it's a sequence of jobs that depend on and pass data between each other. So for example, a job that runs unit tests followed by a job that builds your project into your application, right? So for example, right now we have a very simple, you know, run echo hello world. And then we can actually have another uh, thing in here. For example, hello code with Beto. And maybe we can add an emoji, hit save. Okay, and that's it. Um, this is going to be triggered on any branch right now. So if I uh, actually I need to push this first, I think. So let's go ahead and add this. I'm going to add this to GitHub and then I'm going to commit this by saying add hello world workflow and then git push. Okay, so let's see if that did something. I'm going to go to my project and then and here we can see that the hello world ran and failed less than a minute ago. So let's see what's happening. Okay, guys, so at the time that I'm recording this lesson, we actually have to subscribe to EAS to be able to use EAS workflows. But uh, I know as well for a fact that EAS workflows is going to be available in the free tier. So maybe at the time that you are watching this lesson, it's already free to use and you can start testing your workflow. So in the meantime, I'm going to subscribe to EAS. Okay, so I subscribed to the on demand plan. And now let's go back to my React Native course app. Let's go to the workflows. And let's select the hello world and I'm going to rerun this workflow. So this is actually a good uh, a good thing. We actually have controls here and we can re-trigger jobs from the dashboard. So let's hit on rerun. I'm going to rerun all jobs and confirm. Okay, and now this time it seems that it's working. And just by looking at the expo dashboard, it's a pretty good understanding of what is happening under the hood. So if I come here, you can see that it's searching right now for a worker. So for instance, I can see here the ID of the job as well as the type. So in this case, this is a custom job. Okay, boom. And, and that was actually super quick. You can see that it started in 35 and ended in 38. So just what, three seconds. Um, and here we have the, you know, logs. So once the job is done, it went successfully. And I can see the logs. You can see that we have the echo, which is my custom logic. Um, we have the hello world and could be better with the rocket. So this looks amazing. So we can trigger jobs by pushing code to GitHub, or you can do this manually as well by running the following command. So I'm going to copy this command, go to my terminal and paste this command. So basically it's an MPX command that uses the EAS CLI workflow. And then we're passing the workflow run. And then we need to pass the name of my YAML. So in my case, it's going to be hello world YAML. So let's go ahead and hit enter and let's see if we can run this again. But before I do that, let's change something. Let's just delete the hello world and we're going to leave just code with Beto. So let's run this. Okay, man, I have a typo. Actually, I forgot the A in the YAML. I changed my extension. So let me fix that. I'm going to run this again. And after a moment, you can see that the project was um, uploaded and the workflow started. And I can see the information here, or I can just go to my dashboard and go to the workflows. And as you notice, we have now the third one 
uh, which was manually triggered. The first one I did it in the dashboard and the second one I did it through the CLI. So this is a bit different. In this case, we should have only one um, log. Okay, so it's starting the worker and it's done. I only have code with Beto, which is great. Awesome. All right, just to finish, I want to make sure that this job is going to run only when I push to the main branch. So just by changing this to main, that should do it. And that brings us to the end of this lesson, guys. We learned how to configure and set up EAS workflows. We also learned how to manually trigger workflows that have failed on the ES dashboard or directly from the terminal. In the following lessons, we're going to start doing things more complicated like running end-to-end -end tests, then building your application and submitting to the app stores. All that just by pushing to your GitHub repo. So I hope you like this lesson. I hope you learned something new and I hope you're excited as me for the following lessons. I'll see you in the next one.